During an interview with Tucker Carlson, presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. spills the beans on the biolabs in Ukraine, in China, and how Dr. Anthony Fauci and the Department of Defense went behind President Barack Obama's back to fund gain-of-function research and make extremely deadly bioweapons that could kill the entire human race so that they could make billions and billions of dollars and have a leading edge when it comes to germ warfare. Go ahead and watch this. It's absolutely fascinating, and I want to hear from you what your thoughts are on this interview. Things are U.S. biolabs in Ukraine. Why would we have biolabs in Ukraine? Um, we have biolabs lab, in Ukraine because we're developing bioweapons. And, you know, and those bioweapons are using all kinds of new synthetic uh, biology and CRISPR technology and genetic engineering techniques that were not available to previous generation. And they can make frightening, frightening stuff. Um, what happened was, and, uh, you know, when, when we walked away from, when the Patriot Act reopened the bioweps' arm race in 2001, the Pentagon began putting a lot of money into bioweapons, but they were nervous at that time. Because if you violate Geneva, the Geneva Convention, it's a hanging offense. And they weren't sure that that provision in the Patriot Act would actually hold up as a loophole to treaties that had been ratified by Congress. So they were nervous about actually going full force into bioweapons development. So they transferred the authority for uh, biosecurity to one agency in the, in the HHS uh, called the National Institute for Infectious and Allergic Diseases run by Anthony Fauci. So Anthony Fauci got all the responsibility for bioweapons development. He got at that time a 68% raise from the Pentagon in order to do that work. So, and that's why he was the highest paid official in American, in the American government of, you know, four, four million people in the American. He's the high, he gets more money, he got more money, $450,000 a year than the president. But any Supreme Court judge, any, any member of Congress, he was the highest paid. And it's because he got that 68% raise from the Pentagon to do bioweapons development. Now, when you do bioweapons development, Every bioweapon needs a vaccine, so you develop them side by side. Because in 100% of the cases, when you deploy a bioweapon, there's blowback. Your side also gets sick. So in order to deploy one offensively, you need a vaccine to, um, to counter it. So you need to vaccinate your team before you deploy it. So those two things are, are developed through a, a, a field of science called gain of function science, where you take infectious, where you take an infectious microbe and you amplify its infectivity, or you make it jump species so it may kill monkeys, now you make it kill humans, and you adopt it that way, and there's all kinds of methods, for it. and then you make it immune to antibiotics and to therapeutic drugs and to other therapies. So it's actually the inverse of medicine. For 2,800 years since Hippocrates, doctors have been trying to figure out how to make microbes less infectious and less deadly and develop antibiotics and therapeutics to do that. Well, the guys who are involved in this, there's 36,000 what are called life scientists, but they're actually death scientists, um, who are now employed full-time in developing you know, microbes that will, can be used to kill people. But given the experience we just had three years ago, yeah. where a virus from a bio lab yeah. upturned. So, so let me just finish this brief history about what yeah. happened. In 2014, three of those micros escaped. You know, um, Fauci built labs all over the country, in Galveston, Boston, everywhere. There are BSL-4 labs. We don't even know how many there are, BSL-3 and BSL-4. We have no idea how many there are. There's, um, you know, we've counted them. I have a new book coming out that goes through the ones we know. But there are many secret ones that people don't know about. And they're doing it here in the United States. But in 2014, three bugs escaped from three different labs. And they were high-profile breaks. And they were very dangerous. They had a smallpox and, uh, and a couple of other uh, bad, bad, bad microbes. 
public learned about it. And there was a lot of publicity and Congress held hearings. 300 scientists wrote President Obama and said, you've got to shut down Anthony Fauci because he's going to create a microbe that will, uh, that will cause a global pandemic. And so Obama signed a moratorium that shut down the 18 worst of Anthony Fauci's experiments, where most of them were taking place in Galveston and in North Carolina uh, by a scientist called Ralph Barrick down there. Uh, and, uh, and instead of obeying that law, Anthony Fauci shifted a lot of his operations offshore. And those operations ended up, most of them in the Wuhan lab, which is a military lab, and the Chinese run the People's Liberation Army, and, uh, and then a lot of them went to the Ukraine. So a lot of that science now, and it's funded, not, you know, Fauci was funding lots of it, but then the, the other government agencies began to get confidence in, you know, their ability to get away with it. And most of it is being funded by the Department of Defense. The most of all, the biggest single funder is USAID, which is, you know, a CIA cutout. Do you think the lab leak was a leak or was it intentional? Uh, well, I, the best science shows that it indicates that the people who were working on um, a particular coronavirus technology that was taught by Ralph Barrick funded, it was developed by the U.S. government by and with NIH money. It was then taught to a, a group of scientists Xi Zheng Li, who is famous as the Bat Lady, and then her assistant, Ben Hu, and a couple of other scientists at the Wuhan lab. Barrett taught them two things. He taught them, one, how to engineer the spike with a fur and cleave that could attach to the ACE2 receptors of the human lungs and make people sick and spread you know, through the air. He taught them another trick that has nothing to do with public health, conceivably, which is a technique called seamless ligation which is a technique for disguising the evidence of human tampering. So you can make the microbe and then you can erase the evidence that human beings actually made that microbe. And, um, and, and Ben Hu was leading that research. Ben Hu then got sick with two other of his fellow researchers and they ended up in the hospital with COVID symptoms in November of 2019. So I, it, it appears that Ben Hu, and then Ben Hu, the, the subway line that goes past the Wuhan lab and goes straight to the airport, all the original cases were along that subway line. And so the intelligence, the intelligence agencies that are actually being honest about that, and most of them are not, um, believe that if Ben Hu and two other researchers got sick, in the, the most likely scenario is that Ben Hu and two other researchers who work, were working on infectious coronavirus bioweapons got sick and got with, and they didn't know it. And so they were riding that subway line every day and infecting people before they actually got symptoms. And that's probably what happened, but nobody knows. Now, I know some of you that watch me, you think Dr. Anthony Fauci is a hero and others think that he's despicable and deserves to rot in jail. You're, you're entitled to your opinion. But if you've read some of the hidden documentation about him, the experiments they've done on animals, AIDS patients, children in New York City that are unwatched within the foster care program, you would be absolutely disgusted. But I wanted to share this with you because President Barack Obama was trying to save the nation from these deadly viruses that kept escaping from military bio labs. I also wanted to point out that these bio labs are being funded by our money and they are breeding extremely deadly gain of function viruses in China and also in Ukraine. Why? So that people like Dr. Anthony Fauci can't be hung for betraying a sitting president.